Do you know these side chicks? They have our numbers. So you get a call, you pay. But, 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 <laughs> see, there's the way you have saved your wife on your phone. Yes. Either wife. Or mama watoto or whichever way you have. Ama yule mtu wangu, ama yule, I don't know. Mgini nilona, ame saifu mse wa maka, and that is your wife. Did you listen to the hot breakfast this morning? Here's what you missed way before you became a doctor or pastor. I was ordained to be a pastor in the year 2012. 2012? Yes. They look like you're 20 now. How old were you then? How about you say you've taken good care of yourself? You know, uh, any time you're in court, God mm. has got a way of renewing and refreshing you. You don't grow old. Mm. You just grow better. All right. Yes. So take me back to 2012. <clears throat> Let's start there. Were you married then? No. You weren't. So you had been ordained to become a pastor. I was ordained when I was still a single lady. All right. Mm. And then? Uh, I got married in 2015. Now you've jumped from 2012 to 2015. All, through, like I, pole pole. all through I was just a pastor preaching, uh -huh. young. Yes. Full of the fire. Yes. Uh, set aside and set apart by God. Okay. Yes. So you'd spend a lot of time in church, uh, doing the work of the Lord, of course. You, you know, at that time, uh, I had not even gotten a job yet because I got a job in 2013. So I was just doing these manual jobs. Okay. Uh, E.g. hawking groundnuts, hawking mm. kebabs in town, you know. Yeah. Selling tea and bread in church. And you know you are a pastor. Yes. I got bills to pay and I had to... Just find a way of working things out. So you just do like others, just say, Nimeona, Nimeambiwa, Kila mtu kwa hika nisa, Tanunua mkate na maziwa leo. And then everyone just purchases. You know, after, sell some, <laughs> after service, I would smile so nicely at uh, at the stand I had been given. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could not just pass my smile. And uh, my tea was very affordable. My cup of tea was 30 shillings. My bread, two loaves, two slices, sorry, was 20 bob. So my tea and bread was just 50 bob. Ah, nice. So whether you drink it or not, somebody will just come and dash me 50 shillings. That is my tea and bread. Uh -huh. And it kept me going. All right. Yeah. So 2013, you got a job? I got a job in the bank. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then? Uh, I was transferred to CIA. Uh, the branch which is in CIA. Allow me not to conceal the name of the bank. Yes. And uh, that is where I met. A little man. And he was a fine man. We all are. <laughs> Blood of Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he was a fine man. Uh -huh. And you know, I normally say, because after him I've not yet dated again, eh? all right. till now, uh, the people I dated in the past, nobody has ever... You know, Nirushia mstari venyali Nirushia. Kupika level ya mjalua ikuwa gira isi. He tossed me well, well, well. What are the things he used to tell you? No, it was not even about what he said. It was about what he used to do. Yeah. He treated me well. Like what? Like, uh, I remember, because he was based in Nairobi. Yes. And our church is in Nairobi. Okay. But I was transferred to Siaya. So occasionally, within a month, I would always travel to Nairobi. So one day he said, it's on Saturday, how will you stay in the bus? Why don't I just get you a flight? It is at one, he gets me a flight for four. Mm. Mm. And you know how that expensive it is? We had to book on that particular day. And I had never been to any airport. Yes. So he was the first man who put me on a flight. Mm -hmm. By the time I landed at JK, I, I found his car, he has put it on the VIP section. Hey. Just for me to come out and enter. My, for goodness sake, even if the Lord is not speaking, I will speak. Yes. <laughs> I will say, <laughs> I will say, you know, this is nothing but God. Uh -huh. So we met and he was equally a man of God. Uh, we had a relationship. We had chemistry. He proposed. He paid dowry. We went to Nyayo house. We got our permit. We went. We did our wedding. And we got married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then what happened after that? Uh, just the blues of marriage. You know, within the first few months or the first year, there is normally a lot of uh, ups, ups and downs like that. So things didn't uh, start on a good note for me. Because you remember, uh, like I said, at that time I was still uh, working in CIA. Mm -hmm. But towards approaching the wedding, I think a month to our wedding, I was transferred back to Nairobi. So it's like the close relationship was only lasted for a month. And uh, when it is a month to a wedding, you know, a lot of plans 
are underway. And there's a lot of stress. And it's a lot of stress. You have to meet the service provider, the caterer, the person who is doing our dress, the person who is uh, making our rings and so on. So it is by the time we got married and I'm now in the house that I can now say I am testing his temperament levels. No marriage is the eye opener. Mm. Dating is the fantasy opener, but marriage, ah, marriage, you don't pretend. Dating, we say, is campaigning, and then now, <laughs> <laughs> marriage, <laughs> that, that's when, when the time of the... the ground. <laughs> <laughs> check when your situation is ground. So I just want to really bless the Lord because uh, uh, he he became real very fast. Uh, I am uh, coming from a different background. He's coming from a different background. We have just come together. We are trying to see how things will work. And uh, I will not say he was a bad person. I will just say he had one weakness that he was unable to control at that time. And what was this? Uh, his anger and his temperament levels. You hadn't seen this during the campaign period when he was dating you and sending you flights and saying, baby girl. I was Calm. In, I, I was in. Si remember that time? I'm in Sia. He's in Nairobi. So you come like so, on a So Friday. even if we will get mad or annoyed, I am far. It will just take. Maybe you will not just talk for two or three days. You know. Mm. I'm in Sia. He's in Nairobi. So you will not. You may not be in a position to tell how his face is looking like because most of the conversations were on phone. And at that time, there was a video call had not even come. So it's not like we were doing video call. It was just the ordinary telephone call conversation so i could not be able to detect this. that he has anger issues that uh when he's angry he can react the way he has reacted because anytime we'll have a confrontation in the house and he will get mad uh temper and you know he was big he was well built yes and me i was extremely petite i was very tiny so if somebody even gives you one slap you fall down mm. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yes. So anytime his anchor would come up, his hands would shake. I could not see the shaking hands on the phone when we were talking. And what would anger him? Because I'm trying to imagine even me, I, I, if I was to anger someone on the phone, I okay. wouldn't be able to tell. Uh, let me just give uh, a basic thing that at one time happened. When I conceived, I conceived on our sixth month of marriage, fifth, sixth month. And uh, you know when you conceive and it's a first pregnancy, pregnancy, different pregnancy, different reactions. And people don't react, some react. My own, I really reacted. I I became sick for almost three months. I lost weight. You know, I was small and I again lost weight around uh, nine kgs. Mm. I became very tiny. I was always spitting. Uh, I became rough. My lips were cracked. They were removing some 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 drops of blood you know so you cannot kiss this woman you cannot look at this woman you cannot yes. even sleep with her you cannot do anything and anything small would trigger my anger i was employed he was not um, uh, he was not an employed person he was self-employed yes he was into it stuff so anytime he will get any job any tender mm. there will be no money to finance it you understand so because i'm in the banking setup uh, and I'm a staff. It's easy to get a loan when you're a staff. Mm -hmm. It is just an internal procedure. You apply the same day, it is approved the same day, you're given the money the same day. But him, what was he doing before before he met you? See, he had his processes. I mean, he had used all the money on the wedding. I don't even know how he was doing it. Hmm? Mm -hmm. But now here I am, you know, two shall become one. Yes. Hmm? You're supposed to support the vision of your husband. Mm -hmm. So I would take the money, uh, I give it to him. You know, if you're into IT staffs, most of these people, when they give you the work, they believe you have got experience, you have got some bulk cash you have kept somewhere too. To finance the project. To finance the, the work. And then they tell you uh, after the work has been done to our satisfaction, I don't know, 30 days after work completion, that's when you can be paid. Mm -hmm. So 30 days or 60 days, those are just two months. For goodness sake, this is my husband is in the house. You understand? Yeah. Then when the money comes, the money is can still coming back to the house. Mm -hmm. So I will take the money, give him. So when he has done the work and the work is complete and now he has been paid. I, it's not like I'm asking for a share of the profit or anything. I'm just like, the capital that we took, can you just give me, I go, I pay it back. The man will become so angry. Which capital? Which what? What, what, what? And you know now my salary has been affected because yes. if you don't pay it on time, the deduction is done what is affected. So if I push on it so much, I'm like, I'm the man in this house. I do this, I do this, I do this. That capital, I've got it another uh, you project. Know, project. And I've taken that money and I've put on that project again. So wait for this other second one to mature. So I'm like, when did this other second project come? And uh, there was the profit for this work. Why could you have given me the part that we borrowed? I pay back. 
And then the profit for here, you plow it back there. And then, because this was a family thing, why didn't you come and sit me down on the table so that we can have a discussion? Because I equally had some obligations. And it was, you know, it was not small, small money. It was uh, large amounts of money. So it really affected my pay slip. So I just realized that I'm becoming poorer, kidogo, kidogo, when I, even if he has done the second one after that, he will still not bring the money. You get. And this is the first year of the marriage is not yet done. No, the first year. Yeah, several months. And now I'm you're pregnant, and you've I'm taken pregnant. a loan. So the day I really pushed and insisted, hey, the man, <laughs> in fact, I was so shocked. He hit me, he, and when he, and you know this, this thing, let me just digress a bit. When you're a man and you know you have got a woman who is mouthy, and all women were mouthy in a way. I just say, I, <laughs> I, 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 Margaret, can you ID number, a mouthy. <laughs> <laughs> All women are mouthy in a way. Yeah. It depends the side you provoke. Okay. Hmm? Because you can ask uh, a woman, how are you? Instead of saying she's fine, she will not say she's fine. She will start, hey, you know, in the morning. Hmm? She will talk and talk and talk and then reach in the evening. That's, and then she will tell you, ha, my dad has been good. Mm. You know, that's what I now mean. We have got very many words. Hmm? <laughs> so, ha, I would talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. But uh, I think the anger... His anger levels were a bit high, and he would hit me, and he would not pay the money, and he would hit me, and he would not pay the money, and he would hit me, and he would not pay the money, and you know, I'm now here, I'm a pastor, he's a pastor. Oh, he was also a pastor? Yes. Okay. So, the most of the things that triggered violence in the house was lack of his commitment, a commitment from his side to keep to his word. Then, you know what used to strike me is that before I came, how did he used to do it? He used to deal with a Shylock. Ah. Shylock will give him money, he go da, do the work, and then because you know Shylock, if you don't pay. And the interest is very high. And, and I don't even know, I've never been to a Shylock, I don't know where Shylocks are gotten. Hmm? Then one day I just, and you know it is the first time, the second time, the third time. Then the fourth, now there was another time a very good contact came up and uh, I was not in a position to to own up. So I just saw him, he was quiet, he was stressed, he could not eat, he could not function, he could not do anything. Then I just, something just told me, your husband, just help. Remember the first loan, the second loan, the third loan, all of them have been affected. Mm -hmm. I could hear him on calls, they have gone to this person, this person, I denied them money. The, now he's at the verge of losing the contract. Then I, something just told me, out of mercy, you just help. And I helped. Now what this, amounts are these we are talking about? Now the pregnancy has advanced. We are like nine months pregnant. I mean, sorry, seven months pregnant into the ninth month. And remember, because I had a lot of complications, we were supposed to hire a house girl that was to help us in the house. Mm -hmm. Now I could, we could not hire the house girl because I'm the, uh, still the person who's supposed to do what? To pay the girl. So he suggested a very good idea because we have got relatives yeah. back at home. Why don't you call a few to come and stay with us? Uh, all that we need to do... It's just to eat. We don't need to pay them. They are our relatives. Mm. So he called uh, two of his relatives and they came and they stayed with us. So that became another small community because three against one and I'm a new wife. Oh, so now they gang up upon you in case mm -hmm. you say something. So not necessarily ganging up, mm. but uh, if because these people are human, if they tend to make any mistake and attempt to correct, you know, he will tend to side more on their side because, mm. you know, he has been with these people more compared to the way he has been with what? With you. With me. So, you know, that is family, that is blood. And at one time, I felt like I am losing my place in my house. You get? And at the same time, I'm the one who is in charge of food because we had, uh, like, divided the responsibility. You take care of food, I will take care of rent. Was he paying the rent on time? No. He was not paying their rent on time. Let me ask you, before you, you, you came to live with him, how long had you dated him? Around seven months. Okay. Mm, we met the same year, we dated the same year, we got married the same year. Hey, nasuna kimbiza mambo auntie. Nili kimbiza. Siku ataka indagi ini hache, nilikuwa na jua indagi, itashindanga tuike ni beba beba hivi. Did he do this often? A lot. Often, 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 often. You know, these were the things that were bringing the argument because the loan I took, you did the job. You were paid maybe 300,000, maybe 400,000, maybe 800,000, maybe 1.3 million. But you, but you, you, did ret you, you did return the money. So where is the money going? Hmm? Is it that the money is doing some work outside there? It was like I was taking care of some of my debts. Which debts? 
I mean, we are a family. If there's a debt that you took, what did you do that, do that money? What did you use that money to do? You get what I'm saying? Yes. So, and these are the things that would make me get upset. But no, no, if I ask and ask and ask, I think that was a self-defense mechanism because he did want to own up hmm, that maybe I've done a... And even if there was a Shylock that you didn't pay, you took money to do some personal thing that you never disclosed to me. Okay, it is the debt is already there. Don't you think it will just be good if you just let me know? Because if you get paid 400000 or you get paid 700000 even the money we took from the bank you have not paid, the rent is not paid. You know, it... it so, I... I, I started drowning into debt. The more I take, the lesser my salary becomes. And now I have got him and the two relatives, three, me and the pregnancy five to feed. So I felt it was becoming too much. And I was like, why did you release these people and let them go back? Let us manage in the meantime, the way we are just the two of us. We can be calling Mama Fua to come like once in a week. Mm. And he was like, no, you know, they cannot leave. What do you think my people in the village will say? I'm like, ah. Like what people in the village will say, are you the one who is feeding these people when they are here? I said, no, 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 no. I said, this is too much on me. I'm draining. Uh, remember that time I'm the one who is taking myself to clinic. Where, where is he during the day? Why doesn't he take you? No, when I mean, I'm the one who is taking myself to oh, clinic. Oh, you're then catering for the cost. I am the one who is okay. taking care of the bills. Okay. Mm -hmm. I pay for this. I pay for antenatal. I pay for the pregnant care pills, you know, I have to look for money everywhere. So here, uh, here I am, I am working in a bank, I am a woman who is just in my first year of marriage, not even up to one year, I have got debts since I just married this man, I just entered into uh, a bottle of debts and uh, I, <laughs> I have to borrow, I have to borrow from friends, I have to borrow from colleagues, it was just draining and I realized I'm just like, I'm getting into depression, my acid levels are going so high, Every time I go to the hospital, I have to be told, you, are, you need to tone down, you need to calm down. What is it that is angering you? And then I just said, these people need to leave so that I need to get some, some space. He refused. He said, these people cannot leave, these people cannot go, these people cannot what. If it comes to that, you want to tarnish my name in the village. So I'm like, are you using me to create a name for yourself, whereas me, I'm hurting. I thought me as your wife, I should be your number one priority. And that was not the case. So at the end of the argument, he said, unless, if you're insisting, that you cannot stay in this environment simply means you're the one who is toxic. You need to leave. I'm like, how do I leave my house? Are you getting? Mm. How do I leave? And as I'm leaving, I'm pregnant. Where do I go? So when I just, like, he really insisted, he, his hands started shaking, his anger went up, and that day, <laughs> he really, you know, there's a difference between saying you fought and you were beaten. Mm. And remember, I'm very small and I'm pregnant. And uh, in that one and a half years of marriage, I want to say this, he beat me like five times and four times I was pregnant. First instant to the fourth instance I was pregnant and the fifth instant I, will, I had just delivered. I think the baby was around roughly three months. Hmm? So, you know, it was a very draining process. It was a very draining process. Yes, at the end of the day, the guys had to leave. But I remember that night, I think that was the night he beat me the most. He mm. beat me up, he beat me up, he beat me up. You know, and I'm like, I am like, am I losing the pregnancy? Am I losing the baby? Mm. So should I fight back? Should I get something to hit him? And what am I even using to hit him? We are in the bedroom, you understand? Yeah. And then he's too strong. If he pushes you like this, you go, you hit the bed, you hit the pregnancy, you fall down, you stand. He pushes you on this other side. I was dressing on lightly. He beat me. He took the clothes. He tore them. He was just telling me, today I will beat you until I kill you. And I'm like, ah, is this all really necessary? You know? And uh, uh, it, was, it was just a bit draining for me. It was just a bit draining for me. Yes, at the end of the day, the guys had to leave. But I was there and I was asking myself, now, like, how long will this continue? I remember I left. I went to my best couple's place and I told them, I am so tired. This is not what I bargained for. My money has been spent. I'm no, I don't feel loved. You know, I was pregnant. And uh, you know the way I hear my girlfriend say when I was pregnant, you know, my husband used to bring me an apple a day. I cannot even remember anything he ever did for me when I was pregnant. Yeah. Not even one maternity dress, you understand? Yeah. And it's not like, even though the jobs were not coming like every day, even when one job would come like this, I don't remember anything he ever got for me. Let me not say I don't remember. Actually, the truth of the statement is he never bought anything for me. Uh, let me ask you, at the same time, was he still a pastor in the church? Because He's a pastor. We have to go to the same church. Even now he's still a pastor? 
right now i don't know remember we are separated okay mm? because I had to leave because it was too toxic because he said now the baby was three months when he the, the relatives have to leave so that that's now you've done a year by the time the baby was three no, months old. by the time i was a month to delivery that's when i got the biggest beating mm? uh when I decided to leave, not this was the time I had delivered, and uh, there was a case of infidelity. I remember all these times when the violence would take place, uh, when I would report to the pastor. At first, the first instance and the second instance, I didn't know how to report because, for goodness sake, I'm a pastor, and uh, this is a leader in the church. We are leaders. We all sit on the front row. Uh, we are financial pillars. You understand? Yes. Our wedding was the first wedding in the auditorium, in the new church that we had gone. So people really look up to us. Mm? So how do I go to report that uh, Pasi amenichapa? Na Pasi ya kona madeni left, right and center. Na Pasi ya meniweka kwa madeni. Mm? And uh, you know, he will, he, knew, he knows how to dress, not he knew. He knows how to dress. He will shave well, he will, he will look good, eye on his suit. And even the day he has beat me that evening, that Sunday in the morning, he will wake up very early and go to church. And he will sit on the front row. So me ndakuja kanisani badai thinking, contemplating, should I go, should I not go? And because he has already gone to his seat, immediately we will recharge. The usher does not know anything. He will take your bag, carry you, and usher you directly. To your husband. Uh, to your husband. And then, you know, because the pastor is also oblivious of what has happened, he does not know anything. Hmm? There's a time they say, Geokia Jirani, Mwambi, you look good. How do you Geokia Jirani? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> oh my god. You okay, Jirani, and you are okay, looking at him, and you know people are also looking at you. And then you fake smile. You have to fake that smile. And very many people are faking smiles outside here. Tabu, let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Let's just address the elephant in the room. What should people do in that case? Because I feel like if you're, you're pretending or uh, fake smiling, it's time to deal with some of these issues before it gets too late. Uh... It all depends on how you relate with yourself as an individual. Mm -hmm. You know, Nick, this is the way you relate with yourself as Nick. Yes. Well, the reason as to why I left is because I realized the way I'm relating with myself right now, I don't like it. Hmm? I'm allowing people to hurt me. I'm allowing people to talk down at me. I'm allowing people to abuse me. It's because I allow it. I said, if I can only disallow this thing, I'll be good. Hmm? If I can only disallow this thing, you can talk, my friend. If I'm alive, you talk. When I was born, you were still talking. Yes. When I grew fat, you were still talking. When I started to become thin, you are still talking. Even the day you will die, they will talk, still talk. After you have gone, even after two years, they will still be talking. The other day, people are talking about TB Joshua, and he's gone. Only In God fact, knows. a year after, then the, the, the allegations come people up. People will always talk. But you have to take care of you. Because you have to be there so that you can make you become the you that you want to be. Mm. So this time there was a case of infidelity, I remember. And then uh, when we confronted the matter, he was not happy about it. And because we were living in the same place with our landlord, yes. he decided to bring our landlord. And our landlord is an elderly mama. She is not a baby. Bring the landlord into the conversation. Yes. No, talk to this girl. Mm. First, See. how much, how did you find out? The girl called me. To tell you what? <laughs> Do you know these side chicks? They have our numbers. So you get a call, you pay. But, 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 <laughs> see, there's the way you have saved your wife on your phone. Yes. Either wife, or mama watoto, or whichever way you have. Ama yule mtu wangu, ama yule, I don't know. nilona, ame save mse wa maka, and that is your wife. <laughs> <who is calling. laughs> wow. So, I don't know where they had been that was so intimate till the lady got my number are you understanding yes and then when the lady calls me this is actually what happened i think this is actually what happened my ex-husband had promised this lady something like you know a home theater or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh i think uh, my ex-husband was not in a position to deliver it and it's like this lady was really anticipating for this thing so the lady started posing threats to my ex-husband. Yeah. If you don't do this, I'll tell your wife. I'll tell your wife. And my ex-husband is it was like, You can go ahead. So he never thought that this lady is this crazy. Are you understanding? Yeah. And you know the best part of this lady? This lady was a fresher. Somebody was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. He was just on his first term in the university. 
And do you know the best part of again, uh, of it again? Mm-hmm. The lady we used to sing as a praise and worship. In your church? In the church we attend. Yes. In the choir. Okay. So I am seated. I'm just seeing some screenshots coming up. Some screenshots coming up. And the screenshots were the conversations between him. You know the way you chat with your... Bye. Mm. Whatever it is, you know. And everything that he the, he has been telling this girl, these are things he has never told me. Are you getting? Yeah. Like we say, Lua men of God swail Missouri. Uh-huh. And these were things that even if it was me that was being told these things, I would feel good. Yeah. Mm? You look at the conversation, if it's the conversation between a man and a woman, you are like, wow, this is nice. Only that the culprit uh, here is your husband. Mm? Yes. And the most painful part is that this girl was telling me, you think you have a man. Hmm? Every time he comes, he removes his ring and he puts it aside. And these are the things he normally says about you. You know the weaknesses that your spouse has, whether it is a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. So uh, this lady just highlighted all my weaknesses that I thought it is only my husband at that time that knows to me. So I was asking, how... Even if, you know, I'm that wicked or even if I am not that well endowed or even if I've got A or B or C challenges, why go and share them with a 19-year-old who sings in our church choir? Surely. Really. I was hurt. I was broken. I, you know, it, 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 really, it really affected me. So we are in the house. We are not talking. So he had gone to bring the landlord to come and try and intervene. And intervene. So when I just called things black and white, his anger went up, he removed his belt, the side of the metal. He, he, and not the landlord is seated. He was just beating me. And the landlord didn't say anything? You know, the landlord was also shocked. Because remember, all these other beatings that used to take place, I never used to shout. Because a pastor, you understand, and he's a pastor, so we don't want people to know, people to know or people to hear. And you know, women, we are very sensitive. One hit, the, it, it will cut me because this is a person who is angry. So he will not beat you like a baby. He will beat you like he's getting back at you. Why? I thought I brought this woman here. You are the issue here who is a problem. You are the problem here now. You are turning things towards my side like I'm the owner of the problem and blah, blah, blah. Blood was spitting. Now this woman had to enter here. So it was like a fight between three people. This woman is pushing her, our landlord is pushing him, this other side, I'm trying to move this other side. Then I just told myself, Margaret, I am tired, and I screamed, and I shouted, and the neighbors now came. We are living in a flat, not an apartment. Mm. <laughs> we were living at that time in like summer, so neighbors yeah, can that come. That is a flat. Mm? Mm. That is a flat. <laughs> there's a flat, there's a building, there's a kijiji, there is an apartment. If any more, in Umoja too, you say there's Rounda, you understand? Yeah. yeah. So we were living in a flat. So in our flat, our floor, which was first floor, had four houses. Ground floor had three houses. Second floor had like four houses. So I screamed, and the neighbors, you know, they came, and they were like, what is going on? Kwani Roundi, Pasina, Pasipia. Drama. Yeah. drama, and you know, at that time I have blood on this side, I have blood on this side. Uh, that is when I said, I am tired. Is that the day you left? That is the day I left. You just got up and left. Where did you go? I went down to my to our landlord's house because he was on ground floor, we were on first floor. She took me to the hospital. I got bandaged, the nerve, the wounds were nini, and I never went back to his house again. But you are you're still pregnant at that time? No, I delivered the baby, was now. Oh, months. so you just left with the baby. I, I didn't leave even with the baby. I had to go and take care of my nerves. And remember that time, my sister had just passed by. She was on her way to school. She was schooling at Thika. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to bring me some things, you know, when you are a manuru and you have just given birth, you know, your mother can send you fish, uh, chicken. And I was being beaten and my sister is also in the house. What? So you can imagine the trauma she also, he also caused my sister. And remember, uh, the other bad beating, that was a different sister, this was a different sister. So two different sisters, they get to witness their sister being beaten, hmm. one when she's pregnant, one when she has a baby. So you left, went, had yourself treated. When did you come back for the baby? After two days. Was he at home? No. So you just entered, took my your baby? My sister was. The, the one Remem- from in, in Thika? 
Mm. What happened? You just took the baby and your sister and left? Yeah. Where did you go? To my friend's place. At a great wall, great wall apartments. Sio Kimau. Yeah. Close to Mlolongo. Did he ever try to reach out to you? For what? He didn't. And that's how it ended? Yeah. Did he ever speak again? In less than a month, he had another lady in the house. The same house. Same bed, same room. Same everything. Are they still together or you cut links completely? Uh, I just got to hear a story within a month that she was beaten until... <laughs> she used to get beaten until she would faint. Then she would collapse. I was even told even the pregnancy she had is like she, she miscarried it because of, him. of the beating. I don't have any proof. I just had. Tomorrow is International Women's Week. What would you tell women, especially who are living in these uh, uh, situations where impressions really matter? Because I feel like a lot of people do it for the gallery. You know, than for what asemaji uko inje. You know. You know, I attempted to commit suicide four times. This simply is because after, after yeah, you left. Simply because of what people were saying. People spoke. Hmm? That lady is because she works in a bank. Hmm? It's because she feels she has money. At that time, I didn't even have money. My, my pay slip was pegged. And I want to say it here loud and clear. Up to date, he has never paid even a single coin. He does not even support the child. In fact, he said he does, he's not even sure if that child is his. You know, somebody who is just so selfish and so personal that this thing is just about me, it's me, it's me, it's me. You get? Yeah. Hmm? So if I can say this child is not mine, then it simply means I don't need to provide anything. People spoke, church people spoke. Uh, and this information gets to you now through other people? Even if people are talking about you, you'll get to know words, words travel. Ah, you know, even the other day, Pastor so also was saying this. You don't know. Even the other day, I had Sister so also saying this. Hmm? You go, when you go to any public gathering, you know, church, you hear people say, eh, this and this and this. And then our church was this one. And directly just less than 50 meters away, there was another church. Yes. Hmm? So this new wife, she, he used to go with her to the next church. How do you treat that? And then the members of the next church, you know you're a pastor, you are known. Mm. There was no, eh, and he's like, eh. This your husband is like, he has got another wife. And oh, damn, this wife is beautiful. That is even why he left you. You cannot match her. And, and there are people actually telling you this? They are my friends! Wow. Mm? And you know, now you are in church, you, are not, you cannot even be allowed to sit on the pastor's seat. Uh, how can you sit on the pastor's seat and you just left your husband? You need to sit on the side of others. Do you feel like some of, the, some of the places we hang out is where all the toxicity is? Because, I mean, if you aren't in that situation... Uh, People you, tend to judge a lot. No, there's, there's a lot of judgment. There's in, a in, saying in Swahili, in Darao Mkunga, Uzazi Ungali Upo. Mm. I'm not saying this so that I can be happy. Most of the people who told me that, even right now, they don't have marriages. I'm not saying that because they don't have marriages uh, that I'm happy. The worst thing also hit them. When you see your friend going through something, don't be in a hurry. To, to celebrate. To, to celebrate or to, to announce it. Because you don't know your tomorrow. Be very fast on your knees to pray for the person and to wish the person well. Because tomorrow only belongs in the hands of God. I was talked at, I lost 97% of my friends who are married. I was only left with two friends who are married. Which is also a good thing, I mean, they're no longer in your life. And even the two friends who are married, I came and I lost them. Because uh, here is my boy, he does not know anything to do with the uh, father, you know, he does not know what a man's voice looks like in the house. And when we go to church, he can run and hug somebody else's dad. And uh, I remember most of the cases, the dad that will, he would hug is somebody who also has a baby. Then the baby, you know, when your baby sees you carrying another baby, that baby will start crying. Then the wife jealous. will be giving me that funny look. Why is your child making my baby cry? You, you, you know, those things would really, really affect me. And any time I would go to the house, I would really cry. And I would ask God, why would this man make me go through all this? Why make my child fatherless? Yet you are there. So let me ask you, how long ago was this since you broke up with him? How is it now? How long ago? <laughs> that was part A and part B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We've got four minutes to the top of the hour. 
<laughs> so how did you overcome it now you've gotten into ministry what would you encourage women to do uh what i would say put yourself first say that loudly i want to repeat this put yourself first and i have a scripture to support this mm -hmm. jesus told his disciples love your neighbor as you love yourself and he says a new commandment i give unto you and this is the strongest commandment that you love your neighbor as you love yourself in other words it starts with yourself before it extends to another person if you are toxic you transfer the toxicity to another person if you are okay everybody around you tends to be okay because you cannot give what you don't have don't stay in a place where you're not okay don't stay in a place where you're being threatened don't stay in a place whereby you cannot even serve god peacefully don't stay in a place whereby you are being tolerated you're not being celebrated you're not being honored what are you doing and then you start do you know even every, every time you are bitter you release some toxins in your body you start becoming sick you start becoming out of place you are bitter with everybody you are mad at everybody you are annoyed with life you are annoyed with god you are annoyed with everybody around you i just told i have to be me if i die today even if my mother is there or my sisters are there they will never love this kid the way i do they will never take care of this kid the way i do so i need to be there and I, let, let me say this everybody here was created for a purpose for a reason and with an assignment yes. if you are not there there is nobody else who can do it nick only you can do what you do the way you do it mm. another person can try and they can only be that other person if it's jeff you can only be jeff if it's me margaret i can only be me, me margaret you understand mm. Mm? so you are unique the way you are and your uniqueness is what we need we don't need your duplicate we don't need your copy so you have to be you and you have to put yourself first if you say you're putting your children first you are there you're being beaten every day because of your children let me tell you you will die after you will die you realize those children will still continue being alive i lost my dad in the year 2000 my our youngest brother was one year right is 2024 our youngest brother is 23 years you understand? I understand okay the man has gone has this boy not lived but has he lived the way he was supposed to live no because he needed the father to be there hmm? yeah. so these kids have got their angels he has been alive he has gone to school he was taken to nys he was he got an admission to nys this year his life will continue he has got his own destiny but what about you that your life has been cut short i forgive i forgive if he did it the first time let me assure you he will do it even the one millionth time if he have ever slapped you when you are dating let me tell you by the time you enter into marriage he'll be chopping you with knives that's why i chose to put me first pastor and i left pastor Mm. So where can someone come and, you know, uh, follow the word? Do you have like a church or you do it online? Or do, how, do you help other women? We, we have a church at uh, Rostas. Okay. It is called Manifest House International.